Hi friends, I'm Amy and this is A Star Reads and it's time for my January TBR. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. If you haven't seen my updates, my rules, I will link the video up here that talks all about the game of a bookish life and all the changes that I've made this year. So this is my very first TBR game TBR for the year and this is going to work for January and February. But I will be talking about books that are specifically for January in this video as well. One thing that I'm going to be changing, and this has nothing to do with my game, but it has to do with what I'm going to be doing every single month, is that I created a physical TBR wheel. So I created a wheel. I love wheels. <laughs> and I created one that has every single book or almost every single book that's on my physical TBR on this spinner wheel. So at the beginning of each month, one of the ways I wanna get through my physical TBR and a way that I can end up reading some of the books that maybe I wouldn't necessarily have put at the top of my list, but they'll actually get them read, is to spin the wheel that I created. And whatever comes up are gonna be two of the books that I have to read that month. So I don't know how well this is gonna work out. <laughs> I can add these books onto my game TBR, onto my challenges. I can use them in any other way that I need to, to get them fulfilled. So I just wanna make sure that I'm starting out every month with two books for my physical TBR of that. I didn't get to choose. So let's find out what's gonna happen with spin number one. Ah, okay. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this one. Hesiod was a Greek poet. This is an ancient classic, I think set in 700 BC, or not set in, this was written in 700 BC. And there's two works in here. So you've got Works and Days and you've got Theogony. Now Theogony is a genealogy of all the gods, the Greek gods, I'm guessing. I don't I think all of them. And kind of talks about from the beginning of time to all the things that happened to these different Greek gods, which I think is actually going to be very useful because I do want to read more mythology. And one of the issues that I had with, say, the Iliad when I tried to pick it up last time is that I like to know the back history of everything and everybody. So having an idea of more of the details of all these gods might actually help me to have a better understanding of what's going on when I do end up reading these mythology stories. And then Works and Days is actually like advice from Hesiod about what it's like to live in this world as a farmer or rancher. And it gives a look into what Greek society was like at this time, and also some of their superstitions, and then of course their ethics. So it has more of like a slice of life slash advice as to how you should live your life during this time period. And I think that will be very interesting too. So it's very short. It shouldn't be scary. It's just that, you know, these older mythology books can sometimes be a little intimidating. <laughs> And considering I struggled with Iliad and I didn't finish it because I was trying to read it for a readathon, but like I struggled with it because I wanted to know so much more about the people involved, I think this will help me because at least with the gods, it'll give me a lot more of the background history. Okay, so let's see what's going to happen for spin number two. Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. I'm very excited about this one. This is a YA fantasy. It's about Korean folklore and this main character is a gumiho, which means that she is a fox, a nine-tailed fox, and she gets her energy by taking the energy of men. And I guess she has to kill him probably to get that. And so she's really actually not happy with the life she has to lead being a gumiho. She ends up rescuing this young boy who she's not supposed to. She's supposed to just take the lives of men and live her life. <laughs> and she's not supposed to rescue them, but he finds that he has an affinity for her as well. So I don't know exactly what's gonna happen in this one, but this was a gift for mom from Danielle from Bokhara. But that of course means that it was also a gift for me. <laughs> I'm excited to read this one. I actually really am excited to read this one. So I'm gonna go over really briefly the books that I had actually picked in October, which was the last time I played my TBR game, just so I can tell you like how that turned out. I'm not going to go in challenge mode for the very first time because I'm starting at the very beginning of the game and I'm giving myself a break because it's the beginning of the year. So if I didn't finish any of these books, oh well. <laughs> just wanted to tell you what I actually got accomplished. So for spin number one in October, I picked The Witches of Willow Cove by Josh Roberts, and I didn't finish this book. But mom read it, and she gave it four stars. She said it was a really cute, fun middle grade. Spin number two, I picked House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson, and I did read that. Spin number three, The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. 
I gave this one two very good tries, meaning I got over halfway <laughs> twice, like I had restarted it with a different audiobook. And I've tried to read it physically. This was one that I DNF. I just couldn't get into it. It just wasn't, it didn't work for me. And that doesn't necessarily bode well for Ray Bradbury, but I do want to read other Ray Bradbury's. And so I'm not going to use this one as like an indicator for Bray, Bray Bradbury. For Bray Bad, for Bray, for Bray, for <laughs> for Ray Bradbury in the future. Spin number four, I got Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones, and I did read that. Spin number five, I had Ring Shout by P.J. Jelly Clark, and I read that one. Spin number six, I had Fail Safe by Eugene Burdick, and again, this is the second time that I have not read this one, only because it didn't come up in the video that I read all these books in. If you'd like to see what my reviews are for all these books, I will link a video up here. It's The Death Roll Chooses my Halloween books, and I had a lot of fun doing that video. All right, so let's get started with the game. I'm gonna go into the spin tallies, and then we'll go into spin number one. Okay, so I have decided that I'm gonna start the new year out by starting at the beginning of the board. Now, the only thing that I'm keeping the same from last year are my TBR spin tally. My tallies are as follows. I have one tally on number one, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Then I have two tallies on number three, then three tallies on number six. So I'm actually in pretty good shape as far as tallies go. So that's a good way to start the year out. But I decided, you know, it takes so long to get my tallies up that I better just leave them the way they are. Okay, so let's see where we're gonna go with spin number one. All right, I forgot how to play my game. I've got to figure out which direction I'm going. <laughs> well, this spin counts. Uh, the way it works is if you're deciding to go to college, it's one through five and six through 10 starts at career. So since I spun a four, I'm starting at college. This spin doesn't actually count as any forward movement, but it does help me decide that I'm gonna to go to college first. Also, I mentioned this in my rules video, but I wanna make sure that I reiterate that it used to be that all these books here had to be YA or middle grade. I've changed that. That's not gonna be the case anymore. Now let's officially see where I'm gonna go for spin number one. Nine, nine spaces, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Moving right along. School Days Reread, and that's purple, so that means it can be any genre or diversity rep that I want it to be. Spin number one! That's pretty fun. I get to read a book that I had read back in my school days. I thought it would be fun because it would kind of take me back to things that I have read before. There's a lot of books that I read when I was younger that I'd like to reread, so that helps as well. And what I decided to go with is an adult urban fantasy book. It's, it's a series, actually, and it's one that I loved and Shell loved and Mom loved. We all read it together. I think we started in high school school. I'm not positive. If not high school, it was right after high school. And of course, I was dabbling with college at that time. So I'm going to count it. And this is Guilty Pleasures by Laurel K. Hamilton. It's adult urban fantasy, and it's about this woman named Anita Blake. She is a reanimator, and she's also a vampire slayer, but only when vampires are doing wrong. Like in this world, vampires are allowed to live. They're not always slayed, but she's sort of like a detective when it comes to undead. So like she reanimates corpses to find out information on crimes and she slays vampires when they're misbehaving. So in this particular book, this first one, she's asked by Jean-Claude, who is the head of the vampire clan in the city or the town, wherever they are, to help him figure out some slayings that have been happening that are like not warranted. And she finds that she's attracted to Jean-Claude because who's not attracted to Jean-Claude to be honest, he's super hot. This was a favorite from my youth and you know, it was in the 1990s. So I'm sure there's gonna be elements to this that are problematic now, but I remember loving this and I can't wait to get back into it. Kind of just revisit the past. Let's see where I'm gonna go for spin number two. One, not very far, okay. Oh no. <laughs> oh dear, okay. Longest book on my TBR, but this is an orange spot, so that does mean it's gonna be based on the genre. And genre or book type for yellow is a middle grade. So the longest middle grade on my TBR. Spin number two seemed like it was gonna be rough because it was longest book on my TBR, but it's actually middle grade. So it's not that bad. Middle grades, even if they're long, are not that rough. So I sorted my Goodreads based on the number of pages and middle grade. And the first one that I came up to that I haven't read was Magic by Angie Sage. And this was the longest book on my Goodreads TBR, but because Inkheart 
by Cornelia Funk, Funk was the next book on this list and I actually own that one. I figured I'm actually gonna go with my physical TBR. So longest book on my physical TBR that is a middle grade is Ink Heart by Cornelia Funk, Funk. So this particular copy is 548 pages long. So it's, it's pretty long, especially for a middle grade. This is a middle grade fantasy. It's about this young girl whose father is reading this book called Ink Heart to her. Apparently in the process of reading this book, the evil ruler in the book Inkheart actually escapes and she has to go on this adventure to try to, I guess, right this problem. And in order to save the day, I guess, she has to learn the magic systems that are in the book. And that's what happens, I think. <laughs> I don't know, but I'll find out when I try it out. And I'm looking forward to this. I've heard mixed things. Some people really love it and I know some people who really don't love it. So we'll see how I feel about it. Let's see where we're gonna go with spin number three. Four. Okay, so not very far because I have the career card. So let me pull a career card. This is the career I'm choosing to live this life in, this version, this round of life. And I use this card to kind of give me inspiration for what I should read. And there's no genre or diversity rep that is specific to this. So let's see what career I'm going to get. I'm feeling like this one. An artist! Okay, that's, that's pretty good. Okay, so a book that has an artist in it has something to do with art. Spin number three, it got stuck at that career card. Obviously that's gonna happen. So I ended up pulling the career card Artist, which I think is a pretty easy one to, to do because oftentimes you can pick like a book with a beautiful cover or there's a lot of ways that you can interpret artists. So this is one of the better career cards as far as like how you're able to stretch it. So for this one, I decided to go with The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. He was not only the writer of this, he was the illustrator of this, so he is an artist. And as far as I can tell, this is about a pilot who gets stranded somewhere in a desert, and this little fellow is what that says. Little fellow comes up to him and says, draw me a sheep. And the pilot's like, well, you know, life's pretty crazy right now. Let me just do what this guy tells me to do. <laughs> so he starts drawing the sheep. And this is a classic children's fable, which is very well loved, very well known. And I've never read it, so I'm going to read it now. And this one was translated by Catherine Woods. So I'm excited to have my second translated book on my TBR this month. Slight change of scenery because mom finished painting this blue building. <laughs> so things only change there. Okay. Now, if I roll a one or a 10, I'll be stuck at the stop sign one more time. But if I roll anything other than that, I get to move forward. So let's see where I'm gonna go with spin number four. Four, again. Okay, okay. Uh, that means I get to move forward. Sorry, my brain fizzled there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're moving forward. Yes, yes, woohoo! One, two, three, four. Gifted book, perfect, because I have gifted books I need to read this month or want to read this month. And purple means it's any genre. For spin number four, this is a very easy one. This is gifted book. And for this one, I'm going with You Are a Badass, How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness and Start Living an Awesome Life by Jen Sincero. And so I picked this one because it was gifted by my friend Elisa. And Elisa is someone who she and I often are each other's, you know, champions. We always want to make sure we feel good and give each other support. And she sent me this book because she loved it and she wants me to read it. So you are a badass and I would love to be a badass. And since this is the beginning of the year, I figure this is a good time to try and be a badass. So. <laughs> This is a self-help nonfiction, and it says it's full of inspiring stories, sage advice, easy exercises, and the occasional swear word. So I'm excited about trying this one out. It's also not such a thick one, and I'll be working towards reading some more of my gifted books. Let's see where we're gonna go for spin number five. Oop. 10, oh dear. <laughs> Actually, that's good. That's the first time I've landed on a 10. Okay, so 10 means that I move forward 10 spaces, but I get to pick a secret book for my secret TBR. So let's move forward 10 spots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, I'm stuck here at stop sign. This is typically book about love, romance, or prominent relationship, but not today. It's a secret TBR book. Spin number five was a secret TBR book. So I'm excited about this because I have decided that Given that I got this prompt, I'm going to try and make sure that I get out one of my secret TBR videos 
before the end of February. So it's not a requirement of this of this particular prompt, but I'm gonna really try. I'm gonna really try because that was the goal of having this on my game was that I would get a chance to work on more secret TBRs. So I am not gonna tell you what it is. I will show you this, but <laughs> the hint is it's been on many TBRs and I still haven't read it yet. Okay, so what will likely be my sixth and final spin, I'm going to roll to see if I can go past this stop sign. So if I roll anything other than a one or a 10, I get to move forward. All right, here we go. An eight, I get to move forward. Okay, perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh no. <laughs> That's a plus one. <laughs> So this is a diversity spin and I've got plus one. Let's see what type of diversity I'm gonna be reading. Three. South American rep. Well, we couldn't get that lucky, could we? <laughs> Not on the very first TBR of the year. Okay, so that was spin number six and I will have another spin after this. But for that one, it was spinner wheel, diversity rep. And the diversity I got was a book that has South American rep. And I use these major continents as opposed to specific countries because I feel like it will give me more options and it'll also help me cover greater ground in a sense. And so basically this is a book that's set in or written by an author or has a main character that is from one of the South American countries. So in this case, I'm gonna go with Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I really loved 100 Years of Solitude. It was just, it's my kind of weird. It's very weird. <laughs> Gabriel Garcia Marquez is a fan of magical realism and a lot of times very interesting extreme realism. So this is also a modern classic literary fiction, definitely has a heavy emphasis in magical realism. So this particular book is about Florentino and Fermina and they fall in love, wonderful love romantic story, but at some point, Fermina decides, I'm gonna marry wealthy. You know, sorry, Florentino. It was good, but <laughs> I need to marry somebody wealthy. And she does. And Florentino is just heartbroken. He's devastated. But he's determined that at some point in his life, he's gonna get her back. And that is literally throughout his whole life. He goes and he has many different affairs with different people. I think it's at 622 different affairs over the years, but he still reserves his heart for Fermina. And when her husband dies, I think he's gonna try and win her back. So that sounds very, very Marquez. <laughs> I cannot wait to read this. I'm excited that I'll be starting the year out with this and I expect good things. I just realized I didn't say who the translator of this was. So this is translated from the Spanish by Edith Grossman. So we're gonna go with spin number seven and let's see how far we can get. I've been hitting a lot of fours today. In fact, that's my th third tally on four. Okay, one, two, three. I'm at TBR game. I'm stopping there. That's my last prompt. I think I'm gonna actually make this work for the readathon I'm doing in January. Spin number seven, my final spin for the January, February period. And I landed on the stop sign, which is TBR game. And for this one, what I decided to do was something a little different. Now I'm gonna use the whodunit readathon, which I'm gonna be participating in this month. I'm gonna use that because this whole readathon is based on the game of Clue, Cluedo, and it's also based on the games of Paige from Page of the Page, Danielle from Bokara, and Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf. So this is really based on three different TBR games. So I think it works. What I actually did here was I created a spinner wheel that actually has all the characters, all the weapons, and all the rooms on it. And I'll explain more about the readathon later when I actually give you my TBR for that. I will say that I did this spin, this particular spin first, before actually spinning for my readathon TBR later on. So I figured, I would do this spin as a separate spin. And if it worked with my readathon later on, that would be great. But if it didn't, and it was a prompt that didn't come up when I was doing my readathon spins, then I would just have an extra book for this particular readathon. So let's check out and see what prompt I ended up on. I ended up with rope and it's a weapon. <laughs> I thought that rope, I'm like, what am I gonna do with rope? And then I realized I have a nonfiction book that I have not finished yet. And I know that I've already started this, but I'm still counting it because it's a big book and it's one that I really need to get to and finish. 
and that is braiding sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer because look you're braiding sweetgrass into a rope and I thought that this was perfect indigenous wisdom scientific knowledge and the teaching of plants and this is actually about Kimmerer who's a botanist's experience with the western world of science because that's where she got her education and how she has actually blended that with her Potawatomi ways of knowing when it comes to ecology and plants and whatnot so this is actually an essay collection which I didn't know going into this and I think it's stunning I have read probably 100 pages yeah <laughs> I've read 100 pages this was one where I felt like I didn't need to rush through it and yet I would like to get through it because I know quite a few people have read it recently as well and I'd like to talk to them about it because it is so beautiful and I love the writing so much that I think this would be a very inspiring way to start 2023. Okay, so that's actually it for the Game of Bookish Life for me this month. And I will do a viewer prompt and Magda spins later on, so stay tuned for those. But now I want to talk to you about the other books that I need to read this month or the challenge slash buddy reads that I have going on. First, I have an ongoing buddy read with Kim from Expedition Through Pages, and we are reading Anna Karenina. And we did not get as far as we wanted to, but we both got very busy and we both ended up having challenges in December, especially that took our time completely and we didn't get a chance to go through this. So I'm in part one of the story so far and I need to finish part one. I think there's four parts and I want to get that done because Kim has already finished part one. Once I get that finished, we'll be caught up and we can continue on. I'd like for us to try and get as much of this finished in January as possible, but it really just depends on our schedules and we're both kind of okay with this being a buddy read that takes a little longer. If you haven't checked out Kim's channel Expedition Through Pages, I will link everything you need to know down below. She's absolutely wonderful, love her channel, and you should be watching it. This was translated by Constance Garnett from the Russian, and that's actually pretty cool because that means I have four translated books on my TBR this month. I've got Greek with the side stories, French with the Little Prince, Spanish with Love in the Time of Cholera, and Russian with Anna Karenina. So that's pretty awesome. I didn't even plan that. <laughs> And I wanted to tell you because I want to get better at pointing out the translators because that makes a big difference in the way that these books are read. When, when it comes to translations, whoever is doing the translating, that's an art form in its own right. So I will be better. I will hopefully try and be better about pointing that out when I'm talking about books that have been translated. Next, I have a book club read. So Bailey from Is Bailey Reading, another channel you should be following and I will link everything down below. Bailey has this book club called The Shelf This Book Club. I say that because it has exclamation at the end. In January, she asked me to co-host with her, which was incredible. And thank you so much, Bailey, for thinking about me. And I got to pick the book, which was even more exciting. So I ended up picking Finley Donovan is Killing It because I thought this would be a fun book to read together as a group. And this is by El Cosimano. But I also have been feeling FOMO about this series and everybody else is enjoying it so much that I'm like, Amy, it's your time. You have to do this. And I know that Bailey wanted to read it as well. So I'm like, Perfect. Let's read this one. So this book is about Finley Donovan, and I think she's a struggling writer, but she's in a coffee shop going over the plot of one of her new stories. And it's like this thriller mystery sort of story. And this woman in the coffee shop <laughs> overhears her and thinks she's actually a contract killer, not a, a writer. And asks her to help her kill her husband or something like that. And so I guess Finley Donovan's desperate enough to take the job and try and become a contract killer. But of course, a uh, life of crime is not all it cracked up to be, I guess. <laughs> so <laughs> if you've been wanting to read this book, come read it with us. Shelf this book club. I will link everything down below, including the Discord. Come join us. Come read with us. I'm so excited about this one. Okay, so now let's talk about the Who Done It Readathon. This is a month long readathon hosted by Paige from Page with Page, Danielle from Bakara, and Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf. Three wonderful booktubers that I actively follow and love all of their TBRs that are based on Clue. So I will link all their announcement videos down below. Please go check it out. They will give you a lot of details that I'm not going to give you here. <laughs> but basically, you get to play as one of the characters from Clue, and you're trying to find out who done it. And so you have to pick books based on prompts. The prompts are the characters, the rooms, and the weapons. And you'll start revealing things. And in the end, hopefully you'll find out who was the murderer, what was their weapon, and what room did they do it in. And that's the ideal. That's hopefully if I finish these books, I will be able to figure it all out. So you're able to double up and triple up for these books as long as you double or triple across character, weapon, and room. You can't double up with characters, you can't double up with weapons, what have you. And then one of the cool things that will happen is that you can play as one of the characters and you'll get kind of a bonus 
because they have like special abilities. So I'm playing as Miss Scarlet, of course, obviously, and I seduce my way out of the final challenge. So whatever happens, as long as I read my Miss Scarlet book or at least finish all the books, I don't have to do the final challenge, which is something completely different. I just can skip it, <laughs> which is great. I'm very happy with that. So for Miss Scarlet, I decided to go with The Little Prince. Now, let me explain this. Miss Scarlet is an actress, and one of the ways that the host said you could interpret Miss Scarlet is to read an adaptation, especially an adaptation that was made into a movie or something like that. Just an adaptation in general. I figured Little Prince has been made into many adaptations, many, many adaptations of, I think, all different forms. So I'm gonna count Little Prince as Miss Scarlet, and they said you could be as loose as possible as you need to be with these prompts, so this one's gonna work for me. Then I used my spinner wheel to see what I could get as far as the characters, the weapons, and the rooms. I tried to be as random as possible with this. And so I'm gonna show you that and we'll just kind of go in order of what I get. For the first one, I actually ended up on rope again, which tells me that these spinner wheels are not that random. <laughs> So for rope, of course, as you know, I'm going with braiding sweetgrass. And then I'm gonna keep this up here because for the second one, you'll see that I ended up landing on Colonel Mustard. And mustard is a harvestable weed. You know, it's out there, there's a lot of it, and you can harvest it. And so braiding sweetgrass has a lot to do with what is edible and what you can harvest for food and what have you. So I feel like this works out perfectly for braiding sweetgrass. So this is gonna be used again. And I'm gonna keep this up here right now because then I rolled conservatory and this is perfect. I mean, it's all about ecology, nature, and in the conservatory you find plants. Next, you'll see that I ended up getting candlestick. So for Candlestick, I went with Works and Days and Theogony by Hesiod. Now, the reason I went for this is because, well, it's got a white cover. I think of candlelight as being kind of white or yellowish, but like, you know, light is typically white. And I also picked this because it's a much older work. It's a classic. Those tend to be enlightening. They'll give you information about something you didn't know. And I don't know much about the Greek gods. I'll be learning a lot about that. I also don't know a lot about ancient Greece. And so I'll be learning about that as well. So I figured this worked for the whole enlightening sort of element of a candlestick. Next, you'll see that we have knife. And for knife, I'm going to go with love in the time of cholera because the things that Fermina does to poor Florentino, <laughs> I think of the knife because she stabbed him in the heart when she decided to marry this wealthy man. So that's how I'm interpreting this. And I mean, knives can also cause blood. There's red on the cover. <laughs> I think it works because she stabbed him in the heart. She's like ruining this poor guy. Okay, so that's my choice. And then I got the lounge. And for the lounge, they were suggesting cozy reeds, reeds that'll make you feel warm and, and fuzzy on the inside. And I actually, this might seem strange, but I went with Finley Donovan is Killing It. And the reason I went for this one is because I think it's actually gonna be a very fun read. It's gonna be a easy read in the sense that I will enjoy it. It's gonna be fast paced and it will just be kind of a relaxing read. Some of these other books I'm reading this month are gonna be kind of tough. So this one will be a nice cozy read. And then last but not least, I had to spin it a few times to make sure I got another person, and that was Mrs. Peacock. So for Mrs. Peacock, what I ended up doing was also using Love in the Time of Cholera because we have a bird on the cover, and a peacock's a bird. So it's a love bird, but it's okay, it's still a bird. And so that's kind of why I decided to go with this one. Hey, it's Editing Amy here, and I don't know why I thought that was the last one because there was one more. So I'm gonna show you here, I ended up spinning the study, which was the last room that I needed. So for study, I decided to double up again, Works and Days and Theogony by his side. So this was a double up with study and the candlestick. I doubled up Love in the Time of Cholera with Knife and Mrs. Peacock. And then the only other one that I doubled up was Braiding Sweetgrass, which I doubled up for three prompts. So that worked out really good. This is my TBR for the Whodunit Readathon. Not too bad. This is a month long readathon, so I can definitely get these ones done. I hope. <laughs> I'm gonna try and I'm really excited about this readathon so please come join us it's gonna be a great time okay so now I'm gonna tell you about a book that's not on anything else <laughs> it's nothing to do with anything else but it's gonna be a mood read because it's a book I want to read and in fact it's gonna be the very first book that I read in January once I finish my advent calendar challenge <laughs> I want to read A Man Called Uwe by Frederick Bachman. I'm so excited about this because the movie's coming out and it's A Man Called Otto and it's got Tom Hanks in it as Otto 
or Uwe. And he is one of my favorite actors. So I have a hard time watching a movie before I've read the book, especially if it's a book I want to read. If it's a book I have no interest in, I don't mind watching the movie first. But I've been wanting to read A Man Called Uwe for a while. And now that I know this movie's coming out, I've got to kind of bump it up there. And it's an adult contemporary literary fiction. It's about this grumpy old man who I guess we don't know that much about. So we're going to find out more about him. And that's all I need to know. I love those type of characters. If you've not read The Reading List by Saranisha Adams, go read it because it also has one of those grumpy old men characters that you absolutely fall in love with. Based on all the things I've heard, I cannot wait to read this one. So I'm in a mood read. I'm going to read a book that I can't wait to read. Now let's talk about the challenges that I want to do for the month of January. So some of these challenges are challenges that I have for myself that are things that I want to do more of in 2023. And some of these are challenges like the buzzword-a-thon that I plan on trying to do every month if I can. For the very first challenge, it's something I'll talk a little bit more about in my goals video, but I really want to read more gifted books because I receive gifts from you, from publishers, from authors, and I want to read them because you know, they're from you guys. I want to make it a priority. So this month I actually did very well with that. I'm reading Hasaid from Jezzy. I'm reading Wicked Fox from Danielle. For mom, but for me. <laughs> I'm reading You Are a Badass from Elisa. And mom actually gifted me this copy of Anna Karenina. So I'm reading this one as well. So I'm doing pretty good. That's four books that were gifted to me that I'm getting to this month. My next challenge is that I really do in 2023 want to scratch off more of these books. On my 100 Central Books that Shell gave to me as a gift a couple of years ago. And there is one on here that I haven't scratched off yet. That's Chronicles of Narnia, but I want to do that with you. And maybe I'll do it in the next vlog. I'm not sure, but I will do that separately. The book that I'll be reading that's on this list is The Little Prince. And that is right here. So I've got The Little Prince. Once I read this, then I can scratch it off. And I'm going to try and do one book a month. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe it'll happen. We'll see. Next, we've got Buzzwordathon. This is a year-long challenge that has been created by Kayla from Books and Lala. And for the month of January, the challenge is books that have the word life or death in it. And for this one, I'm going with You Are a Badass, How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness and Start Living an Awesome Life. It's got life in the title. And that's the one I'm going to go for. The next challenge I like to participate in every year is TBR Knockout. And this is hosted by Melanie from Completely Melanie. And the intention of this is to use prompts to try and help you read the books off your physical TBR or your ebook TBR, books that you own. It could be audiobooks that you own, but books that you actually own that you want to get off your TBR. So you're knocking out that TBR. So for the month of January, the theme is Clean Slate. And the first prompt is to read a book that only has words on the cover. And so for this one, I'm going with You Are a Badass because it only has words. There's no actual graphics on here. So I think that works out perfectly. The second prompt is a book with white on the cover. And so for this one, I'm going to go with Works and Days and Theogony by Hesiod. And finally, I'm going to be doing another challenge because I am a glutton for punishment. <laughs> and this one is being hosted by Whitney from Tibera's Den. And Whitney is doing a genre-a-thon, which I think that is wonderful because I tend to read a lot of genres anyways. And this will be fun because maybe it'll get me to read a little bit outside of what I typically read. Maybe it'll give me a little bit of variety. So for January, the theme is New Year, New You. Read a self-help book or a book that teaches you something new. And I was like, well, that's absolutely perfect because I'm already reading a self-help book in January. <laughs> and this will hopefully set my year out right, you know, help me feel like a badass. Okay, so that's it for all of my books. Now let's talk a little bit about your books. Let's go to the viewer prompt. All right, so for our last viewer prompt back in October, you guys ended up on TBR game. Now you have been stuck there once, you're not gonna be stuck there again. So going forward, it's just gonna be forward movement. So let's see what your prompt is for the month of January, 2023. Where's your journey in this game of bookish life going? Three, not very far. One, two, three. A book card, a book card. Huh, how's that gonna work for you guys? I don't remember what we did last time. <laughs> Let's see, we'll pick a book card and we'll see what happens. Family pick, okay. This works out good because all you have to do is pick somebody from your family 
that will pick a book for you. Okay, so you got book card and it was family pick. And family pick can mean anything to you. Whatever family means to you, whatever works out within your life, please think of this prompt pretty loosely. Let me know in the comment section down below what book your family picked and are you excited about it or are you not so happy with your family at the moment? Okay, so that's all I've got for my particular TBR at this point and the viewer prompt. Stay tuned because you're gonna wanna see what happens. <laughs> With Mac to Spitz. I can't even say it. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned. It's gonna be good. <laughs> I'm laughing with you, Magda. <laughs> Anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see what happens in January. Will I read these books that I want to read in January? Will I do well with the Who Done It Readathon? And then, well, we'll wait till March to come back and worry about whether or not I finish my. TBR game, TBR. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Bye. So when we last left Magda in October, she was on TBR game and so that's where we're gonna be starting with her. She did hit TBR game once, so there's a possibility she'll have to do it again if I land on a one or a 10. So as far as her tallies go, she has, whew, she's got some rougher tallies than I did. So on two, eight, and 10, she has four tallies. On one, three, and five, she has three tallies each. Then on four, six, and nine, she has one tallies each. So uh, two, eight, and 10 could be trouble. So let's see what we're gonna get with spin number one. Ooh, just barely. Okay, so she's moving forward. Let's see where she goes with nine spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Diversity spinner wheel. And let's see what that's gonna be. Dark red, dark red is Asian rep. So a book that has any type of Asian representation and is either set on one of the Asian countries or has an author or a character that is from one of those Asian countries. All right, spin number two. Eight, okay. One, two, three. Let me put this back here and we'll see if she's gonna be going to the left or to the right. So it's one through five to go left, six through 10 to go right. Going to the left, okay, eight spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, let's see. <laughs> oh, I didn't even look at that at first. Yeah, that gives you an extra spin, Magda. You had four tallies on eight, so you definitely have plus one there. And this one is MRM, My Choice or Magda's Choice. For Magda, it's going to be whatever she feels like reading. So this is a My Choice space, which is good because you got an extra book there. <laughs> and let's see where you're gonna go for spin number three. Go this way. Five. How are you on five? Oh, that gives you Four tallies on five, so you're getting close to being on trouble there. And five, with my new rules, is a book card. Magda, so you're gonna get a book card, even though we are moving forward. One, two, three, four, five, but it's a book card. And this, this one right here. Newest on your TBR. So Magda, whatever book you've added the most recent because you've heard someone say something about it and you're like, oh my gosh, that sounds so good, I wanna read it. Whatever book is most recent that you've added onto your TBR. Let's see where you're gonna go for spin number four. Five, again, of course. <laughs> that gives you an extra spin, Magda. Oh, these tallies, maybe we should've started off with your tallies. Oops, I forgot to ask. One, two, three, four. <laughs> this is a genre wheel. <laughs> a genre spinner, so we're gonna spin for genre. Let's see what we're gonna get. Three, that is a dark orange. That's adult fiction. So basically anything that you would consider adult fiction, for me, adult fiction is literary fiction, historical fiction, or contemporary fiction. Okay, I did a little bit of a camera readjustment. And let's see where you're gonna go for spin number five. Eight. 
Well, you're safe now with eight because we already used it all up. <laughs> all right, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is another genre spinner. So let's see what genre you're gonna get. This is on the purple. All right, Magda, so you're gonna have to pick up a classic of some sort, whether that be an older classic or a modern classic. It's gotta be some type of classic novel. Let's see where Magda's gonna go for spin number six. Two, not too far. Oh dear. Oh dear, Magda. January might be rough for you. <laughs> One, two. Stock card, Magda. Well, and it's an Insta poll. So I know you don't have Instagram. Uh, let me think about how we're gonna do that. In the meantime, let's pick a stock card. So with these stock cards, they are going to increase the number of books that you have to read, Magda. And they, I think, go from one to four. So let's hope you don't get four because that's pretty rough. Okay, I think we're gonna go for this one. Three. <laughs> not four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even realize <laughs> that that was your fourth tally on number two, Magda. Oh, so that's man. actually plus four. <laughs> Happy January 2023, an exciting year. <laughs> that was a really rough roll. Magda got four extra spins in that one. Three from the stock card. I said in the video that Ma Magda had four tallies for two and she did have four tallies for two, but then of course landing on it added an extra tally. So she had five tallies and I didn't think that was very clear. So that added an extra spin as well. <laughs> So for the Instagram poll, what I decided to do, because Magda does not have Instagram, was that I asked her for three adult fantasy books that she would be interested in reading in the next month. And I put those up on Instagram as a poll. And you guys voted. And thank you so much to everybody who did vote. And if you're not following my Instagram and you want to be a part of these votes, my Instagram is linked in the description box down below. You can always follow me. And then when these things go up, you can be a part of it. So the choices that Magda sent me to have voted on were The Lightning Struck Heart by TJ Klune, the Starless Crown by James Rollins, and From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And so I put those all up on Instagram, you guys voted, and the winner is The Lightning Struck Heart by TJ Klune. So I know Magda's very excited about this. I know a lot of you are very excited about this. So I'm very happy that this is the one that came up. Let's keep going. Let's see where you're gonna go from here. Huh, with spin number seven. Wow, the game was really nice to me. It wasn't nice to you at all. Okay, number four. One, two, three, four. Death Roll Chooses. Okay, so that's another one where I'm gonna have to show you what it looks like in another clip. So let's go to future Amy. Okay, so this next prompt Magda got was Death Roll Chooses. I forgot to mention that because it's an orange spot, it goes based on the genre. And so since we landed on the red color, it's adult horror, thriller, or mystery. So the five adult horror thriller mysteries that Magda said she'd be interested in reading in January are Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King, The Night Shift by Alex Finley, Nosferatu by Joe Hill, The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum, and The Mask by Dean Koontz. So you'll see here in a second, I did a death roll chooses and we'll find out what she got. All right, Magda Got Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King. I have no clue what this is about, but I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so before moving forward, let's figure out which direction we're gonna go. To the left, it's one through five. To the right, it's six through 10. Oops. 
six through ten, so we're gonna go on the right. And let's see where you're gonna go for spin number eight. Eight, you're gonna go to eight, and you're okay with that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Five star prediction, and this one's based on genre. So this one is romance. Hey, that's good, Magda romance, five star prediction. All right, we're getting there, Magda. Let's see where you're gonna go for spin number nine. Four is really popular today. Four, I hit four so many times and now you're hitting four. Okay, let's go four spaces. One, two, three, four. Setting equals a country I have never been to before. Okay, so this is a new prompt and you basically need to pick any book, genre or diversity, doesn't matter, that has a setting for a country that you've never been to before, Magda. Spin number 10. I'm running out of fingers. Six, okay. Six is fine, you're safe on six. I haven't hit very many sixes yet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Book box book. Okay, what I might do is look at the books that you want to read on your TBR and see if any of them are ones that have been in book boxes that I know of. Might do it that way. Let's check out what we're gonna do with that with future Amy. So here she is. Hey, it's future Amy. <laughs> So for book box book, I went and looked at Magda's Goodreads to see what I know has been a book box book. And one of the books that I saw that I'm very excited about, it's one that I really, really want to read and I don't have it. And I keep hoping it'll work for my advent challenge prices, but I haven't been able to make it work yet. That's Razor Blade Tears by S.A. Crosby. And this sounds like an amazing one. It was a book of the month book that was like really popular with book of the month for a little while. So hopefully this works out Magda. Hopefully you're able to get it on audiobook and I really hope you enjoy it. And what we are hoping, <laughs> unless we land, land on a 10 Magda, what we are hoping will be, or unless we land on that too, our final spin, spin number 11. <laughs> Here we go. Whoa, okay, that was very close. <laughs> it's really close. Okay, let's see, we're gonna go for nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What are they reading? Woohoo! I love this one because I have a jar full of lots of the different booktubers on booktube in general. And I'm gonna pull one of them. And Magda, you've gotta pick a book from one of their most favorite books. A lot of people are putting out their favorite books of 2022 videos. Maybe you'll want to find one from that. I'm not sure, but we'll see what you get. Okay, this one right here. Who is this? Oh, Q and TG. You know, Q and TG are not active right now. So let's find somebody else. I'll put that one aside. Okay, let's try this one instead. Oh, there's two. We'll try this one. Noelle Gallagher. And I know you watch Noelle quite a bit. Go pick out one of her favorite books, one of the books she absolutely loves, and choose to read that, Magda. I hope you find something great. And let us know in the comment section down below what you end up choosing for all these prompts. Good luck. I mean, this is rough. <laughs> all right, thanks so much. See you next time.